Hey, free mind, you crazy for this. Soulful. It's like our responsibility to make us feel something. You know, to make people feel. Make people feel what we feeling. Hey, yo. Reggie here, and I want to welcome you to another one of my live streams. This is Comics Today, a show that we do on Wednesday night to celebrate the best day of the week, that being New Comic Book Day. And in celebration of New Comic Book Day, I'm going to go to the chat here in a hot second and ask you guys to call out the books that you may have picked up at your LCS earlier today. And if you want to shout out your LCS, you can do that as well. If you happen to not make it to your LCS, but you got some books today, I want to know about those books as well. Again, this is all in celebration of the fact that we love collecting, reading, uh, and enjoying comic books. That's what this is all about. And as also part of this show, we're going to spend some time talking about some news and current events. I'm going to have a guest on or two that is going to help me to make sense of something that is happening in the world of comics and collectibles. I'll also tell you, I do believe that the Moon Knight trailer or no, the Moon Knight series was released on Disney+. Plus. If anybody in here decides to ruin that, it is going to be ungood. So we are not going to talk about Moon Knight in any way, shape or form. I am hoping, I am hoping to have a moment to myself at some point today to be able to sit down and watch this show, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, as another reminder, this show that you might be watching right now live is actually going to be rebroadcast on our podcast, which is available on all of the podcasting platforms out there. If you search for Reggie Collects, you will find me on that platform. And if you don't, let me know, and we will do our best to get ourselves uh, subscribed to or submitted to that podcasting platform. I will tell you that there is a ton of stuff. There is a ton of stuff that we are going to try to get into and as I was getting ready to go live, my man, Phil Tastic, sent me a, a piece of news uh, about Stephen Ditko and some, some rulings that have come out that may make it very difficult for some creators to get the rights back to their creation. I have not yet had a chance to read the full article from Bleeding Cool. I will dig into it at some point, and maybe we'll talk about that. But I also received the tidbit uh, or the okay to talk about something about uh, the, the video that I released a few days ago in which I talked about our obsession with 9.8. Some people have raised some comments and said that there is actually better return on investment when you uh, buy a 9.6 versus a 9.8. I actually had a really smart guy send me some data and I took a look at the data. He took a look at the data. We talked about the data and uh, that's not necessarily accurate, but I'm hoping to find some time in this show to talk about that data. If I cannot get to it, because the show was already jam-packed, uh, we may get to it on the Sunday show. Uh, let me go to the chat real quick um, and see if folks want to shout out a couple of things before we get the ball rolling, because there are a couple of announcements that I want to make here about the winner of the short boxed giveaway. This is a giveaway that we do every single month where somebody gets a $100 credit. We're going to talk about that. And then we're also going to do the, the, um, the Black Lightning giveaway. We're going to randomize the list. If you entered, uh, we're going to do that. Uh, and then we're going to dig into some news. So let me look. I'm waiting to see if anybody has thrown up their list yet. Uh, Turbo Man, how you doing? He says, good evening, fellow collectors. Well done, brother. Well done. It is good to see you up in here. Uh, Stitch picked up uh, one Dark Knight, Ghost Rider 2, and Spawn. That's what's up. Very nice. Very nice. Phil Tastic is in the house. How you doing, brother? It is good to see you. Uh, Rush. Die Hard, my Canadian brother, picked up 21 copies of Batman Beyond the White Knight. He, this was a pre-order. That's what's up. Congrats. Uh, Bulldog, um, you cannot announce that you win before the giveaway because if you are the winner, then people are going to think that I've rigged the contest. So let's not do that. You know what I'm saying? Let's just don't do that. <laughs> but I do, I do indeed hope that you are the winner and uh, bear with me. We are we are fighting some colds here in the uh, the Simmons household. So bear with me here. Uh, major issues. How you doing, brother? It is good to see you scrolling through the comments here. I think uh, maybe you guys didn't hit the, the the shops today. Picked up twenty back issues of Spawn and some more Howard the Duck. Uh, Shadow, you are clearly talking to my man Milt. My man Milt is a a fan of Howard the Duck. 
uh, that that is probably near and dear to his heart. Uh, Lithograph, how you doing, brother? It is good to see you. And uh, there you go. A bulldog clearly took that in the, the spirit in which it was intended, which is to have a little fun. Mark, how you doing? Picked up New Burn, Iron Fist, uh, Animal Castle 4, Black Panther, the Alex Ross sketch variant. And then uh, Conan, one facsimile, along with some other things. That's what's up. Net, net, yeah, net. Uh, picked up Doctor Strange 1, a CGC 9.6. That's what's up. He says it's up about 45%. Congrats on that, my man. I know this. I will not. <laughs> no, you're not, Dave. You're you're absolutely not going to win. Uh, you and your brother's names are both in there because I didn't strip those out. But if you win, yeah, you're not getting anything. Uh, I actually I actually did remove mine. I, I searched and I had one vote in there. So I went ahead and removed that. DJ Lynx is in the house. How you doing, brother? It is good to see you. Uh, Mad Attack, my LCS had a $1 sale and I picked up 34 books, mainly Spider-Man. Well done. Well done, sir. If you're going to go big, go big with the Spider-Man. You cannot go wrong. Uh, let me see. Just got home from the LCS with Hulk 5, Ghost Rider 2, among others. Miscellaneous T. It is good to see you. Um, <laughs> Mike, Mike, don't Mike. My, come on, brother. You, 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 you can't be in here talking about smacking people, you know? <laughs> Will Smith broke the internet. No doubt about that one. All right. So let me, let me move on. Cause I am going to run out of daylight. I, I, Cause I have a lot of stuff I want to get to. Um, so let me go ahead and announce the winner of the, the short box contest. And again, shout out to short box for being a sponsor of the channel. They put me in a position to be able to do some cool stuff. Uh, and they, they do a lot of giveaways, right? So I'm very thankful for them because one lucky person is about to get a $100 credit to, uh, to use on the short box app, which is available here in the U S. Uh, I don't know if this person is in the U S but if they are not rest assured that I do have a backup, we are not going to announce the backup because more than likely this person is in the U S but we're going to keep our fingers crossed. Cross. I'm trying to find it right here. Here we go. And the winner of the short box $100 credit for this month is Anime Geek. Anime Geek 611 is the winner. And you can see that there are roughly 115 names on the specific video. The video was released on, I think, the 14th of this month. All you had to do to get in the running was to watch the video, leave a substantive comment behind, and that's how you, you enter the giveaway. And so Anime Geek 611 is the winner for this month. Uh, Anime, if you are here in the live stream, make sure you send me an email to Reggie at ReggieCollects.com, and I will send your information over to Shortbox, and I will obtain uh, that uh, that password or that, that uh, code that you need to get the $100 credit. If you have not yet downloaded the Shortbox app, I definitely Definitely want to encourage you to do so. There is a link in the description or should be or will be. If it's not, there will be a link in the description for you to download the Shortbox app. It is the easiest and safest way to buy graded comic books. Ooh, ooh that was smooth. That was smooth. Well done. <laughs> Scrolling through. All right. So we, we, we do have one other winner. We do have one other winner that we are going to announce right now. Well, well, first we're going to, we're going to roll some dice. We're going to roll some dice. Shout out to Dave for having this wonderful idea to do basically like a March madness thing with brackets and some covers for black Adam, where people had an opportunity to vote every single week for the last four weeks. And, uh, every single week you could get one entry into, uh, the, the contest. And so we are going to randomize that list of, uh, 103 unique names, uh, a total of 267 individual entries. And what's really interesting is that there were 39 people that voted every single week. So they have four shots, four shots on goal of being able to, uh, to get a really awesome prize from my man, Dave Bratton. Uh, shout out to him again for, for having this idea and for, for Lee Atkins to, uh, to make the magic happen. Uh, and I get to come on screen and, and, and have all the fun, but shout out to both of those, those guys for making that happen. So we're going to randomize, uh, we're going to roll some dice and then we're going to randomize this list. Uh, so let's go ahead and roll this. It's been a long time since I've rolled some dice. We have rolled seven. We have rolled the number seven. We're going to randomize this list that number of times. And then we are going to identify our winner. All right. So here's the list. 
These are all of the people, and there's somebody with a chicken leg, uh, <laughs> chicken nuggets. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna see his name a couple of times because I kept seeing that wing as I was scrolling through the list. There's the second one, uh, but yeah, this is probably way too fast. Pretty fly for a Filipino guy. See, Tina's in there. Turbo Man is in there. Vox Wild Boar is in there. Climbing Comics. Uh, Master Blaster, Lee Atkins is in there a few times. Feel fantastic. I just saw your name. Joe is in there, but this this is the list. We're gonna just scroll through. That's the list of people. Let's randomize this thing seven times, and uh, we are going to. And it was 267. It's now 266 because I removed my name from there. So uh, let's randomize it. What is that? Here is four. Been a long time since I've had to do this. Uh, what is that? That was five. Here is six. And the winner of the giveaway, the Black Lightning cover contest winner is do, 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 Vikram. 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 Is that is that uh, Vika? Is that Vika, the uh, closet geek? Is that who that is? That might be him. That might be him. Shout out to him. Uh, again, I believe that this is limited to the U.S., but Vikram is the winner of the cover contest. And uh, if there is time left in the show, uh, we're going to take a look at the the books that he is or she, I'm guessing he is going to win. All right. Shout out to both of our winners. Let me go ahead and uh, close out of that. Uh, Bulldog, did, were you third? Let me look. Let me look. <laughs> <laughs> you are indeed third. That is hilarious. Well done, sir. Potentially, had you not jinxed yourself, you would have been first. I'm just saying. But you could see, you could see the rundown of the of the top 10 there. Chris Biggers in the house. It's good to see you, brother, on the list. The spawn 826. Lots of good people on that list. Lots of good people. Lots of good names that I recognize. That's what's up. And again, Bulldog, uh, all in jest, my friend. Uh, you did. You did make the top 10. How about that? How about that? Uh, clearly, the uh, guy that's smart comic collecting that you're holding in your thumbnail was your lucky charm. So that's what's up. Mark says I'm 21st. <laughs> At least you made the list, brother. At least you made the list, brother. Yes, that was for the... Um, Oh, which cover? Dave, which cover won, brother? Oh, I think I know. I think I know which cover. Because last night, it was a tie. It was a tie last night. I, I took to the Instagram machine and started to make some noise. And then I, I think a couple of more votes actually came in. I think, I think the cover that won was the Black Adam. Uh, let me see. Let me see. This cover. Hopefully you guys can see that right there. That cover right there is the winner. It was down between those two covers, those two, and uh, ultimately it was that one, that uh, that one out, which is a, a cover uh, that will look familiar to a lot of people because that's the one that ultimately became the cover to the Guide to Smart Comic Collecting. So uh, this one's dope. This one is incredibly well done. That's a that's a really, really cool cover right there as well. So good stuff. And again, shout out to Dave for having uh, the wonderful idea and and for Lee uh, for working in the background to uh, to make a lot of magic happen on the Discord to get that all set up, to get me the list, to allow me to, again, to be able to randomize it. And Dave, please let me know if I, uh, yeah, there we go. One by one vote. There you go. Thank you for, uh, for keeping me honest. The vote uh, was basically 33 to 32. It was 51% to 49%. There were 65 people that actually voted in the last, uh, the last round of the giveaway. Again, uh, overall 103 people, uh, unique folks voted. So there you go. It was rigged. <laughs> <laughs> Team A all the way. Boss Logic cover is dope. No doubt about it. There you go. Yeah, man. One vote, man. One vote. And I was going to be the tiebreaker. I was, again, last night I took to the Instagram and I was like, I don't know if you want me to be the person that breaks the tie, but I am, I am happy. I am happy to be that guy. Okay. I'm happy to be that guy. Uh, but thankfully my services were not needed. All right. So uh, let me let me get ready for this next thing. So um, this this next thing is a little bit of of a sad note, to be honest with you, a little bit of a sad note um, because um, what is it, Adam? Adam, how you doing, brother? He says really fun contest. That's what's up, man. Adam is the guy that did the uh, the colors, did the colors for the cover. It is good to see you, brother. Um, 
All right. So let me go ahead and get ready for this next type of topic that I want to get into because it is a little bit of, of a sad note. It appears uh, that a comic shop in Canada was actually targeted by an arsonist. Uh, they, they were targeted and there was a fire that was started. Uh, the fire, the first fire was, was put out. And then the person came back and used accelerant, spread it, spread accelerant gas throughout the shop, set it on fire, and and the, the basically the entire contents of the shop uh, was lost. So th this appeared on CBR.com. Um, Wonder Harbor Comics launches a GoFundMe following arson attacks. And that is an S because there were two of them uh, located in Canada, launched a GoFundMe after the story was destroyed in an arson attack on March 27th. Um, it says they announced on Twitter that it will be closing due to a fire believed to be caused by arson. It is with great sadness that we have to announce that Wonder Harbor is now closed the account posted, we were hit with arson last night and the store is not recoverable. We will do everything we can to get the customers, the books that they were waiting for. Uh, thank you, which, which get like your store was just burned down and you're, 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 you're extending your hand to, to your customers and saying that they're going to try to take care of them. That, that is wonderful. Um, says, uh, the, the beloved wonder Harbor was destroyed by arson. Uh, who purchased the store in 2019. They spread gasoline throughout the store, lit a fire that consumed everything. There is nothing left. Thankfully, no one was hurt. And Rufus, which I, I guess is a snake, uh, is in the hands of a reptile uh, rescue. So it says here, let me see, the fire was contained in the building and it looks like the building will survive. But all the hard work you've seen in Wonder Harbor team put into the build, put into building Canada's largest comic store has been lost. We are devastated. This will be a long road and any help is appreciated from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for the outpouring of support and love. Uh, and it says, according to the journal, the Edmonton Journal, the fire broke out shortly after 2, 2 a.m. on March 27th at uh, the, the address there. Firefighters arrived on the scene to find heavy smoke coming out of the windows. It was under control approximately 40 minutes after their arrival. Uh, by 5.20 a.m., the fire was completely out. And they highlight here that a separate fire broke out just seven days before. One week earlier on March 20th, they said that the store closed for the majority of the week due to uh, a lack of electricity. Uh, but posted back on the 25th that they were uh, restored and back in business. So they were back up and running for two days uh, before being attacked again. There was a GoFundMe. I have not yet had an opportunity to donate, but I am going to do it uh, because, you know, it, it, it's 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 unusual. It's unusual in my mind for uh, a comic shop to be targeted by arson. It's just, it's unusual, you know? Um, but, you know, it's it's Canada. It's not here in the U.S., but still, I think we are all one community despite the, the border that might exist. So I'm going to donate some money to this. I will put a link in the description of this video to that article in the event that you guys want to read it in the event that you want to make a donation as well. Uh, but, but Mark actually sent this to me and I'm very thankful that he did because it, again, in many ways, uh, we are one community. We have a tremendous amount of love for our, our brothers and sisters in the hobby that are just to our North. All right. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I want to say that something I read alluded to the fact that a security camera caught the individual running away. Um, but I have not been able to find any additional, uh, details, uh, but we, we may talk about it a little bit later in the show. Uh, this was, this was released two days ago. So there's a chance that there could be some additional details, uh, that, that are out there. Um, and, and to my knowledge, there are no leads to my knowledge. There are no leads. I don't know where this comic shop is in, in proximity to other things, but you know, a lot of times what happens is even if the shop doesn't have a camera, it's some of the, the surrounding businesses that do have an angle that allows them to, to see the vehicle or to see the, the perpetrators of crime. I, I don't know how, uh, widespread arson is anymore. So not only in my mind is it unusual for it to be an arson attack, it's also unusual that it be deployed against the comic shop. 
You know, it's just, it's unusual in my mind. Maybe, maybe I'm just not privy to, to crime, but it just, it just seems a little different. So Ty Brute, um, can we get a raffle for them? Maybe something to draw eyes to this. I, I don't do raffles. I don't do raffles or, or auctions or any of that other kind of stuff. I do, however, try to bring, um, let me throw that up on screen. I do, however, try to bring awareness to things via the channel. And I definitely try to also put my money where my mouth is. And so I'll definitely, as I mentioned, I will be donating to, uh, to this comic shop to help them get themselves back up on their feet. Uh, and if they didn't have cameras, help them maybe to buy some cameras, man, because clearly they are a target. You know, the only thing I saw that, that was sadder than this, to be honest with you, was some attack in Daly City where somebody basically tackled for the second time like an 86 year old man that was out uh mowing his lawn you know and 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 this is that was the second time that he had been attacked uh and his family after the first put up security cameras so this time we actually got to see the perpetrator run up behind him and uh and and basically kick an elderly man you know it's just I don't know. I don't know that, that th I basically saw these two things roughly at the same time. And, and, uh, both of them are, are definitely perplexing, you know, um, scrolling through it, it could, it could be anything. It, it could be anything, you know, we, right. <laughs> we, we, man, uh, I'm gonna tell you another story a different day, but yeah, the, the Arlo at Costco, you can't go wrong. I think it's what, like 500 bucks for like three cameras or something like that. I, I think that's it. You know, um, it's just, it's sad. So a couple of people making a few comments there, um, about, you know, uh, some possible solves or pro possible, uh, reasons behind some of this stuff. The one thing that I will tell you is that there, there is a belief, um, that the shop was actually doing well, right? Um, the shop was purchased in, I think 2019 Canada's largest. I think it was actually a, a profitable shop. At least that's the impression that I get. Um, so I, I, I don't know. You, you just never know. You just never know. You never know, uh, what's behind some of this stuff. So we are a little bit ahead of schedule. So my, my, my guests are going to join me here in just a couple of moments and we're going to dig into, uh, some topics, but I, I, I do want to, uh, speak very briefly about something because I think I think I can squeeze squeeze it in. So I want to I want to take a moment to to talk about something. Um, no, maybe I won't. Maybe I won't. May, I, I was going to try to to shoehorn it in there, um, but I think that that would be too aggressive. So let's not do that. Uh, I will, however, segue into the the main topic that I wanted to focus on for this show. It wasn't the arson thing that I put use the arson on the thumbnail because I wanted to raise some awareness of, of what had happened. So we, we've covered off on that, but I want to uh, get to this other topic. And, and someone sent this article to me and their comment to me was that they found the, the, the subject matter, if you will, to be a little troublesome. And so it, it captured my attention. I spent a little time in between various meetings, kind of noodling it. And, and I decided that I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about it. So we're going to do that. And so this was an article that came out on uh, CBR.com. And it says, Marvel might as well change Kamala Khan's comic book origins too. And uh, I'm, I'm so glad they used the correct uh, grammar there with the T-O-O -O because I had someone that just jumped all over me when I messed up on that one time. It was just, it was a sad day for me. Uh, but it says, Marvel, Miss Marvel's upcoming show radically alters her origins and powers. So perhaps the comics should be changed to match this. And this actually came out back on March 27th. It says Miss Marvel was, is one of many upcoming Disney plus shows set in the MCU and stars Kamala Khan. And it says, unlike many MCU productions, Kamala's backstory and powers have been changed wholesale. This includes her connections to the Inhumans, which has seemingly been cut from the show. Given how big Kamala has been pushed in the comics, perhaps uh, Marvel should do the same to her there. This retcon may seem a bit ex extreme, but it only makes sense if Marvel is hoping for synergy. It also lines up with what has been done for two other MCU heroes. Um, and it says it goes, this article then goes into a lot of detail about Kamala Khan. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know a whole lot about her uh, and her power set. I don't know a whole lot about the TV show. Uh, but but if you want to read this, this, this is an article to read because I think it goes into some of the details. And it says here, 
that synergy, at least according to this author, is a big thing with the MCU, especially going forward with the new generation of heroes. While some fans might roll their eyes at this, this is definitely a special case. Uh, and it goes again into some of the Inhumans, the Lockjaw, some of that stuff, the Terrigen Mist. Um, but but I want to do right now, uh, I want to bring on uh, the person that that flagged this article for me. And I want to spend a little time talking with him about what it is that may have grated his cheese uh, to the point where he would flag this one for me. I want to welcome to the show, Mark. How you doing, brother? I'm good, Reggie. How are you? Brother, did you get dressed up for this show, Mark? Well, there's a, a story behind this that when your next guest comes on, you'll understand because he said he has like a makeup artist and he has a publicist and he has an assistant. So <laughs> I had to up my game. I respect this. You had to step your game up. So, be before, be, before we get to this Kamala Khan thing, man, you also sent me the arson story. Um, yeah. ha have you heard any updates on the arson story, whether they have, uh, some leads, whether they have a motive, if, if, have you heard anything in the, in the streets? Nothing in, nothing other than what I had told you I had heard earlier, which got debunked really quickly. And I, and I'm not sure where that one came from. So I'm not even going to give a traction here. Yep. Um, but right now it's, they're still looking to see, um, the owner did have closed circuit TV. And it was attached to his phone at home. And he was watching this person burn down his shop as he was oh, trying to man. get there. And uh, he watched whoever that was run through his store, dousing gasoline and setting it on fire, which I can't even imagine the feelings as you watch all your work and effort. And as you said, uh, everything I understand is it was a very profitable shop. It was uh, well liked. It's got a lot of support. And uh, it's just one of those things like who burns down a comic shop? I mean, like it just it doesn't make sense. I mean, and I think people were right to say some of the comments that they left in the in the in the chat. Right. Because if something bad happens, oftentimes it is the person closest to that thing that is first looked at and and ruled out before they start to expand. Right. So people were right to say what they did. But I think the point that you and I both made about about the profitability of the shop. Um, the fact that the shop was well liked may debunk at least some of what was seen. Um, I could not imagine no watching um, there was somebody, a, a, somebody in the chat that said that shop was within an hour from where he was. So oh, wow. if that person wants to put in some maybe more details than we know in the chat, that would be great. Um, but it uh it could be anything, it could be insurance fraud, it could be a disgruntled employee. It could be someone who just doesn't like comic books, which I don't understand who that would be, you know, unless it was like Chris was upset that they were selling Marvel and not just DC, but that's a whole nother thing that we could get into, but we won't tonight. Hey, hey I didn't know where you were going with that, but well done, <laughs> you, man. You, you can always throw a Chris bigger out there and he is good with it. He, you know, he's a good guy. He, he has, he has a good laugh. So uh, well done, sir. Um, but but let, let's get to the task at hand. The the Kamala Khan article, uh, it, it, it did something. It did something to you that prompted you to send me a message. What was it that you found troubling about this article? Well, and, and my very first line in my message today, maybe I'm just being the grumpy old guy about comics and messing with stuff, but it's, there, I think the two medium can live together and not be exactly the same. And I think it paints creators into a really tight corner when they start to retro con things like it's okay that we have differences, I think. And, and I know some of the arguments, well, we were talking about them. Some of the arguments was, well, uh, you know, it will confuse new readers. And, and I thought about that. So, I mean, and yeah, my LCS is a small LCS and we're in a small Northern Ontario town. Dark Horse Comics, North Bay, Ontario. Just I'd slide that in there. Anyway, yeah. um, and I asked Randy, I said, when a movie comes out or a show comes out, do you get flooded? Because he is the only shop in town. Mm -hmm. I said, do you get people coming in looking for that book? He said, no, not after the movie. He said, I get everyone before it even airs mm -hmm. coming in for all those issues that relate any way to that movie or that TV show. And all of those books have the old stories in them, whether they're like the new one or not. So 
I, I don't think we should do that. And I've seen um, some disasters happen when they retcon stuff. Like there was a very popular character on a Smallville TV show everybody loved and they retconned her into that story and that didn't go so well for her that didn't go so well so there is danger there to do that um like the new movie coming out in uh, morbius um unless it because we just seen previews right but it seems it looks like he can switch from human to vampire well the main thing with morbius being so ticked off about this disease he was stuck He's stuck. Yeah, yeah. So does that mean we're going to retcon and go back to all the Morbius books and go, yeah, like he's he he he's going to be sparkly during the daytime, and you know he's always going to get the girl, and he's never going to look blue and really horribly pasty pale like he's never in the sun. Like, why would we do that? Yeah, I think it's a disservice. And and, and I don't think that the 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 author of that article. I, it, it was interesting because he was like throwing it out there saying that they should do this. But in my mind, to what end, like to what end other than maybe some possible confusion that could happen. But again, that, that assumes that the people that are watching a TV show are the same people that are then going to go to a comic shop and buy a comic. And there's in my, my, opinion or understanding there's no data that suggests that that actually happens it seems like it's us as comic guys that are watching the shows and buying the comics right but but let me pause to hear your thought well exactly that why did they make them why are they making these shows is it because oh this this comic book it might sell good so we're gonna put millions of dollars into a tv show or a movie like millions of dollars in yeah. And hope that they buy more comics. No, it's because the comic is selling like crazy. There's an audience, built in audience, that's going to go see the movie. And I I know this will shock you. I have seen every superhero comic book movie I can get my hands on. I've even seen Solomon Kane. It's a movie from Europe. Bet you. And it, no. it was horrible. <laughs> but. <laughs> um, but I didn't then go, well, this character is different than the comic and, and, you know, set my hair on fire, run around the room in, in despair. It's just, it's another take on the character and yep. that's okay. Yep. And sometimes they do takes in the shows that kind of disappoint you. I know that you are desperately hoping that Namor has little wings on his heels. Hey, I mean, tiny green shorts and little wings. I mean, it's like it's made for TV or movies, right? It's just perfect. Uh, yeah, but I got a feeling there's a bunch of people wearing something like this sitting in yeah. this that's going to go. Uh, no, yeah, we can't do green shorts. We can't, can't do tiny do green shorts. shorts and wings. Um, so I, there's things that's happened in movies like the Hellboy movies. Anybody notice that is he wore boots? Yeah, not not me because I really didn't watch the whole movie. Well, to be honest. but did the Hellboy fans like freak out that he didn't have cloven feet like he not does to in my the knowledge. comics? And did they roar back to all those comics and say, "Mike, sorry, you got to redraw him and put boots on him because we want to have consistency"? Or worse yet, these 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 comics where he had cloven feet are now worthless as a result of the fact that he wears boots because that was another point that was made in the article that I was like that. That, that doesn't make any no, sense. But it was no it was a lot of a lot of stuff thrown out with like without a whole lot of substance behind it, you know, in my opinion. But let, let me do this real quick. Let me bring in my next guest because I want to get his opinion of this as well. Uh as Mark straightens his tie, we want to welcome to the show Dave. How you doing, brother? It's good to see you. Whoa. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Because I cannot hear you. Ooh, that is, that is ungood. That is ungood. You may have to make some adjustments there, sir. Let me take this off. Uh, take that off your forehead. We can, we can hear you just fine. Oh, now, well, now no, we can't can hear you. Hear you. All right. So we're going to, we're going to pull him off. Let him work through that issue. But he looked and good, didn't he? He did look good. I, I don't know about good. The, I don't know about the makeup though. I don't know if he had makeup. I, I think he needs to work on that, but I, I, I don't definitely know need some, you see my I, shiny forehead. Um, I think, I think he, nope, he's disconnected. Hopefully he will be back here in a, in a hot second. You know, um, one of the things that I thought about as I was noodling this was, are they potentially making this recommendation because of the new generation of readers and collectors who are going to be exposed to characters like Kamala Khan and Miles Morales through things like Scholastic, 
because they're they're doing a big push there with their graphic novels is is there a thought there that those readers for whatever reason might not be able to make that mental shift from the version that they see in a movie or on a tv show and the version that they see in the comic is there a thought there that it may be for them not for us and I thought about that, and that 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 may be a legitimate point, but I really think that's a disservice to those readers because Why? I think they, and it makes no sense to me if they're trying. I know like they're making more money on movies and TVs than they are comics. I'm not going to say otherwise, but if you introduce these new readers to this character, they're going to look for the old comics, and they're going to read the old comics, and they're going to read about oh who are these Eternals? And I can tell you, they're desperately wanting to sell some Eternal comics because they're just kind of sitting there. Yeah. So it would, I think it would drive sales because I actually have had a chat with a young guy in an LCS and he came in and he had just watched the Avengers movies. He had never seen them before. So he'd gone back and had binge watched them and he was looking for Avenger books. Yep. And that's awesome. That doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen so but i don't think you're disappointed when you go oh this is slightly different any kind of the thing that kills me is have we forgotten that beginning of most tv shows and movies it usually says based upon you know the works of based yeah. upon the story of and i mean that it's based upon it right. it doesn't have to be exactly the same yeah. And, and I mean, I we, we, really we saw we saw some of that direct we like we've seen direct lifts of things from the yeah. comics to to a movie or a TV show. It's not always done well. Right. Um, no. But but sometimes it's done and it actually does work like um, what is it? The old guard. The old yeah. guard, in my opinion, was a direct lift from the comics to the to the movie. But I also think that the comic was probably written so that they could make it into a movie. Right. Well, I it, think the comic was a storyboard. Exactly. It was the whole I, purpose behind it. it. Let me build it, the audience of people yeah. that are interested in this comic. Now I'm going to roll out the movie. Now I have a built-in audience. To your earlier point, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. And but, I have a friend who does storyboards, who did storyboards. He's just about retired now. He does, but he did storyboards and he did all kinds of that stuff. And that was part of the creative process when they were doing some of the movies he was involved in. Yep. Was can this be adapted elsewhere? Yep. Right. How can we can how can we do this? And I to your point, when it doesn't work well, they tried to turn the Hulk comic or into a movie, but used the Hulk movie like a comic. If you remember the very first one mm -hmm. with the different screens like yeah. cells on the screen. Yeah. And tried us to get us to watch a movie like a comic, which that's maybe it's just me. It did did that kind of it really folded bad. Hi, Dave. Dave, Dave, welcome back. Yeah. Can you hear us? That was super fun. Yeah, I couldn't hear a thing. <laughs> yeah. Tried to get back in. It wouldn't let me back in. So now I'm on my phone. Well, you're here now, brother, and we are making magic happen. So you heard at least part of the conversation. I, I know that you've also read this article as well. Yes. Were, were, you know, is Mark being just a grumpy old man or is there some <laughs> legitimacy to his comments about this article? Well, first things first, Mark wore his suit. I wore mine. Um, Honestly, Kate. <laughs> no, um, no, no, Mark's, Mark's got it right. It, it, these films don't have to mimic every aspect of the comics. They have to make choices that make sense for them creatively in the medium, uh, the film medium. Some things work in the comic that don't necessarily work as well on screen. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one thing I, Mark had mentioned, Hellboy's uh, feet. I mean, Thor has yellow boots in the comics, you know, with black stripes. That's not how he looks in, on film and no one cares. Ultimately, you have to stick with um, the core defining um, characteristics mm. of these of these heroes, of these characters. And, and I think people will be okay with it. I mean, I was thinking about some of the choices that we've seen in some of these films. Um, and one, I think casual fans discovering the characters for the first time on screen probably aren't going to notice. I think hardcore fans will mostly forgive if it's a solid creative choice. That's true. X-Men films, Wolverine never wore a costume. The vision 
is Jarvis. That's not how he is in the comics at all. Spider-Man has organic web shooters in the first three films. You know, uh, these are, you know, these are changes that they made, but they were creative choices. They didn't go too far afield. And I think, uh, you know, when you do go too far afield, that's when it just doesn't work for, for really any of the fans. I, I mean, look at, I think Ryan Reynolds is a great case study. In, say, in more, say more about that. <laughs> well, his first incarnation of Deadpool is reviled. Fans hate it. It's not yeah. Deadpool. Yeah. His second is beloved because it stays true to the core of what that character is in the comics. I thought you were going to talk about Green Lantern. That's why. No, no, I was talking about Deadpool. <laughs> talking about so, Deadpool. so, so, Mark, you, you made a. You, you can't forget about the Green Lantern, brother. Yes, you so, can. Didn't so happen. You, you made you made a comment earlier about how potentially changing the comic book version to match the the movie or the TV show could be too restricting for creators that are making the comics. Can can you put a little bit more texture to that as to why you feel like having the synergies between them would be uh, restrictive for them? Well, I I think. And this is a really tragic example. Um, Chadwick Boseman, Mm -hmm. like, what a horrible thing. Like, and he played the Black Panther so well. And he introduced um, the Black Panther to so many people. Um, And I I was a Black Panther fan, still am, from the first time I saw him because he was one of the first, right? And we linked him back and even you started to see some of the stories in the comics, the features start to, to mimic him a little bit. Yep. And then there's this angst about, well, we can't recast him. We, we, can he continue on in the comic books? And I think, and we can't ask him cause he's not around, but yep. I don't know if he would want that. Um, I don't know if he would, if he still wanted to play that character. And I say that thinking about Leonard Nimoy. He tried to get away from Spock in like half his life and finally went, ah, fine. Okay, I'm Spock. <laughs> and he played him until he died. And I think you don't give an, uh, a creator of a comic or a movie or TV show that ability to put a little bit of your own spin mm. on that character. And I use the example of characters from literature as well as comics. But I was, I was thinking of, can you imagine if if only one person could portray or draw or have uh, Sherlock Holmes, yeah. Dracula, um, James Bond, how many people have played James Bond and the world didn't come crashing down. So when we have the ability for creators to, to have that flexibility to put a spin on something, I mean, I just read my first issue of Captain Carter. It was, uh, it was not bad. It was, it's not bad. She mentioned Steve Rogers. Yeah. Like, does that mean that because of that, we have to retro, like, if the book becomes super popular and, and well read, does that mean, well, we're just going to forget about since 19, what, 40 something, that character, which I know is ridiculous, but it's, we have to be and the folks who put this stuff together and say things like the fella did in the article give us credit as, yeah. as consumers yeah. and fans of the genre. Yep. I love to see different iterations of characters. Dave, get in there, brother. Yeah. I mean, we talk about wanting to keep the comics or the film version consistent with the comics. The comics aren't consistent with the comics. No. You know, they change all the time. DC's re- rebooted several times. This I remember year. being, being this a year. kid. Yeah. What's, yeah, exactly. I remember being a kid and reading a Superman comic book where essentially the way they explained the fact that no one realized Clark Kent was Superman is that he had the power to hypnotize everyone when when he was wearing his glasses. And so they saw him as an older, more frail man. Like, that was forgotten immediately, you know? Like, so trying to keep everything the same, the comics don't even attempt that. Yeah. So it doesn't work creatively there either. Why should you limit yourself when you have different mediums that allow for different things? Why, you know, constrain yourselves? I'm curious, Dave, from your perspective, whether you see any potential advantages 
to having some synergies between the two because we've spoken about a lot of disadvantages. Are there some advantages to actually going that route? And and Mark, I know you're you're sometimes grumpy. I'm going to need you to think positive here and okay. give me one as well. So Dave, have at it, brother. Uh, of course, there. Like I said, it's really important to keep the okay. defining characteristics yeah. of yep. these these characters when you put them on screen. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen it. Uh, Kevin Smith tells a great story where he met with John Peters when they were talking about producing a Superman film. Mm -hmm. And and the producer, John Peters, told Kevin Smith, the potential writer, I don't want Superman in the costume. I don't want him to fly. And I really think Sean Penn would be a great Superman because he has the eyes of a killer. <laughs> and Kevin Smith was like, this is Superman we're talking about. Like, <laughs> you cannot go that far afield because fans just won't accept the that's not the character right. at all even remotely so if you get a chance to to go on youtube and check that story out it's hilarious kevin smith is a great storyteller um but it's really important to keep some of those key defining elements um Consistent. and that's getting back to the article ms marvel it does look like they're keeping some very important parts of her character you know, in the show from the comic, maybe the powers have changed a little bit, but who she is, you know, someone who idolizes uh, Captain Marvel, you know, a young teenage Muslim woman, yep. those, those elements are all there. So I, I do think it's important to hold on to those defining key characteristics, but some of the stuff like the colors of the boots and the feet and all that, you know, whether Wolverine wears the mask or not, that's secondary and, and that can sometimes go. Let me ask this question a different way. So, so we've spoken a lot about keeping, keeping them somewhat consistent, but allowing for them to be separate. Is there an argument to be made for sin for, for there to be overlap? Is there an argument to be made for the comic to match the movie or vice versa? Like, is there benefit to that in your mind, Dave, and then Mark? I mean, I think they're what I was talking about with the basics, but I mean, if you think that connection will help either one sure um but i don't i don't think it has to be that um that strict that tight yep. um you know it, it, i'm sure there's some benefit but the main thing is really the core of those characters in my opinion if there were some data that said that if they yeah, watch the movie I mean, they go buy the comic then i'd be like yes do it but if there's yeah. no data then why right. do it but, well, and but, we've seen so many examples where yep. it, it wasn't. So, yep. and I, I mean, I don't know that I've ever heard saying, well, you know, Spider-Man had organic web shooters. That's it. That's not Spider-Man. These movies are no good. I'm not going to watch them. Yeah. Those movies made combined billions of dollars. They, yep. they did okay. And, so, and some of them weren't that good, but neither well, here nor there. Definitely not. Right? I mean, it's still, it's still Spider-Man, but, but Mark, yeah. at, are there advantages? Could, can you fathom yeah. some positives to this thing yeah i can I, so I, i've kind of loosened up I'm, I'm good i'm ready so um first of all marvel used to do them all the time marvel uh movie special mm. marvel uh movie adaption books um and you saw and you could buy a marvel comic that was the movie DC's yep. done the same thing with the Batman movies, the Michael Keaton comics. Yep. There's there's special like one-off comics out there that have that movie star idol on the front cover as a picture cover, and they're selling those comics. That's there's nothing wrong with that. Those those things, and there is even subtle differences between the movie adaption comics and the movies because like plot lines and stuff in a comic, you know. We don't, if it's a one shot, they don't really get into too deep, a, you know, subplots and that kind of stuff. But I think it, it, it is got some good points. And if you see something where people get talking a lot about it and you want to slide a little, like, I think it's almost like a carrot, right? It's a little, here's a, here's a hidden little treat for you. It's like the Wolverine costumes that Dave talked about when he opened up the case on the jet. And it was the yellow and brown <laughs> costume. And he went, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> was cool. That, that was cool. cool. And we all went, yeah. So but as soon as but as soon as you saw Hugh Jackman, you were like, that's Wolverine. 
I don't need you in a uniform to know you're Wolverine. It'd be cool if I saw you in one, but I still know who you are to the point of having some consistency with the core elements of who these characters are. Absolutely. And I think that there, there are those positives. If, if the worry is, Oh, people won't buy comics. There's lots of things they can do to sell new people, that character. And I, and like, you know, the, Kamala Khan is such a, a new and important character for all of us to read about. The fact that they've slightly adjusted in the movies is not going to prevent someone from grabbing that book. Agree. Who's never read a book before and seeing something new. And the same thing is if they slide some of that stuff from the movie into the books as they progress, I think it's okay. I just don't want them to, to take go back to the very beginning and say we have to rewrite everything. That would that would be silly, Dave. Dave, is there anything that you would add to that uh, as we get ready to wrap up here on this on this part of it? Would you add anything to what Mark just mentioned, or any other thoughts that you have? Well, the only thing I, I was thinking about in in some ways, her powers in the uh, comics resemble Mister Fantastic's a little bit. I think with some of the stretching. I mean, and from a Marvel perspective, they might be not wanting to put that on screen until they reboot. You know, Fantastic Four. Who knows? Maybe they don't want similar power. There may be thing those conversations happening behind the scenes that we aren't privy to. That's pure speculation on my part. But, but you uh, never know. You well, never know. There, there's oftentimes a reason for what they do. We might not always understand it or be privy to it, but there's oftentimes a reason for it. And and if they're modifying Camilla to give me Mister Fantastic, I'm actually quite comfortable with that. I'm actually. Very comfortable with that. So, uh, Mark, as we get ready to let you go, brother, um, where can people find you on the social media? On social media, I'm pretty hard to find. I'm Instagram. If you're looking for me, um, I'm on the Discord. And as I've said before, anybody who wants to have a chat with me every Sunday night, Wednesday night, I'm usually in the chat stirring up trouble. There we go. Brother, I want to thank you for jumping on here, man. I, I appreciate you keeping me in the know with some of this news because it's hard for me to know everything. But thanks to folks like you and and honestly, Dave, you guys send me a lot of great information, which allows me to know what's actually happening. So I want to say thank you for that. Thank you. Are you gonna? We're waiting for you to just bounce us off. Like you're gonna. I mean, in mid sentence, okay? I'm going to say bye to you, and then I'm going to click the button. Mark, thank you, brother. Take care, Mark. There we go. All right. I even got you. You and you were able to wave. All right. So uh, before I let you go or my phone throws me off or that, do you want to show people uh, the giveaway item that who was that that won? Uh, Vikram, that Vikram won as part of the Black Adam cover contest. I think you have them there. Do you want to show people? And Vikram won. Make sure you email Reggie your name and your contact information. So he can pass it along to me so I can give you the books as long as you're in North America. So otherwise, <laughs> yes, he better be in North America. If he's not, then I'll have to pay for it. So I prefer him to be in North America, but go ahead, brother. Exactly. Well, first things first, they're not these two, uh, the two winners, <laughs> not going to be those two. Sorry. Um, but we've got some cool stuff for you. At least I think it's cool. Um, the first we've got an Alex Ross cover. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. I cover. like it. Um, got an Alan Davis cover. You might recognize this from the contest. That's a cool one too. Gotten another Alex Ross cover. I think I that's have that one. Black Adam knocking down Adam Smasher. I think that's it's pretty one. cool. I it was tough for me to leave this out of the contest. Honestly, <laughs> I think it's a great cover. Um, and then I've got a book from Black Rain for those of you who read my um blog Blog i'm speculating this is gonna be connected to the story of the film to a degree as we all know they're not entirely tied in um then i just this is a great um gary fright cover uh black adam just looking incredibly bad um and then (laughs) finally last but thank you for not saying what you were about to say (laughs) he's not being very patriotic um yeah i'll put it that way um this is the Jerry Ordway graphic novel mm. that he did in the early 90s. Uh, and yes, it's Shazam, but Black Adam is the antagonist. And it's it's a cool story. And this I, I kind of feel like this run really helped define the character uh, throughout the 90s and, and a little bit beyond. So that's what you have won for participating 
in the contest. There you go. That's not a bad stack. And to the point, Vikram, uh, I will uh, try to post up somewhere to where you can actually see it if he's not here watching. Uh, make sure you send me an email to Reggie at ReggieCollects.com with your screen name, government name, your mailing address, so I can bundle that up, send it over to, to Dave so that he can bundle up all of your books and send them out. Again, Dave, thank you, brother, for having the idea and for making magic happen over this last month and also for giving up those books out of your collection uh, to another member of the comic book community. I absolutely appreciate your, your support of the channel. Well, thank you for, for running with the idea and huge thank you to Lee Atkins too. You guys really made it hap happen. Uh, Reggie, you're promoting it. Uh, Lee made it happen on discord and, you know, thank you guys for participating, you know, for voting and, and making it fun. Cause if it's two votes, it's not that fun. But no, the fact that it went down to the end, the way it did one vote, that was crazy. That yeah. that was a lot of fun. So, so where can you. where can people find you on the, the social media if they want to get a hold of you? Sure. Uh, action figure comedy on either YouTube or Instagram. There we go. I, I appreciate you, brother. We'll talk soon, okay? Thank you, Reggie. Take care. And I did not cut him off, Chris Bigger. There we go. All right. So, uh, again, shout out to both of those guys for uh, coming on the show and representing and just having a good time chatting with me about uh, the, the crazy things that are happening in the world of comics and collectibles. So, as I alluded to, there is one other thing that I wanted to try to get to. Technically, I have two other things. Um I want to try to get this one in real quick. I, I was contacted uh, by a guy that watched my video in which I talked about 9.6s. I'm sorry, 9.8s and our obsession with them. And there were several people that commented on that video, not this guy, but there were several people that commented on that video and, and one or two others that reached out to me and made comments about the fact that there was actually a better uh, return on investment when it comes to 9.6s. And and to one of the, the people that posted it up, I was like, hey, send your data over. Let, let me take a look at your data because I've heard people say that there's better return on investment with the 9.6 versus a 9.8, but I have never seen data. And, and you know me, I, I do like to take a look at a date at data. I'm not as into the numbers as, as some of you might be, but I do appreciate numbers and data. And so uh, one person sent it over and we had a back and forth. He had a hypothesis about which way he thought things were going to turn out before his analysis. He did the analysis and was a little surprised at the findings. I looked at the data and was also uh, surprised at some of the findings. And so I want to talk a little bit about that. I'm not going to go into a crazy amount of detail. Again, this was something that was was given. I was given the thumbs up like two minutes before going live. So I didn't have a whole lot of time to think through how best to present it. But one of the things that people have spoken about is the the return. And, and oftentimes they make broad statements about the, the return is better when it comes to 9.6s versus 9.8s. And I've seen some people that have said that the percent return is better on a 9.6 versus a 9.8. While that may be true in some cases, uh, the absolute return is not the same as the 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 percent increase on that return. Those are not necessarily the same thing. And, and it's one like it's a percent that's great. But what's the actual dollar amount difference between them? It is actually substantive. And so uh, I want to glance at this data set real quick. Um, I have removed the person's name that sent this to me because I don't want this in any way, shape or form to be taken as a criticism of him uh, because it is definitely not that. But essentially what you are seeing here are basically five comics, five modern comics that are relatively popular comics, Ultimate Comics, Spider-Man 1, Edge of Spider-Verse. Ultimate Fallout 4, something is killing the children, ASM. You can see that down the first column. The second column is basically the FMV uh, from GPA in 2020. It was the average. So let me restate. It was the average value in 2020 for those books. The third column is the current 2022 price of those books. And the last column is the percent uh, change. And so what you can see, for example, when you look at Ultimate uh, Comic Spider-Man 1, the very first line, you can see that uh, this comic at a 9.8 had an average price of $707. Current sales price is $1,127. That's a percent change, a percent increase of 159%. 
When you look at the 9.6, it was 180. It's now 370. The percent increase is indeed greater. It is 208%. And the way that you get the percent increase is you basically divide the increase by the starting value. You multiply by 100. So you divide 1127 by 707. You multiply that by 100. You get 159. That's how you get those numbers. From this, you would say, yes, the 9.6 has a better return, but that's from a percent standpoint. When you actually look at the dollars and cents, what you would see is that the 9.8 has increased by $420. The 9.6 has increased by $195. That is a $225 difference, more than a 50% increase between the 9.6 and the 9.8. And as you go down this list, essentially what you see is that three out of the five books, the 9.8 actually has a better percent uh, increase. And also in all five cases, the absolute value is greater in every single instance. So this idea that 9.6s have a better return than 9.8s, I don't know. I don't know about that, at least as it relates to these five books, somebody would have to do a much uh, deeper dive and look at a much broader set of books to determine. Uh, but but I thought that this was an interesting data set to kind of look at, and I wanted to share that with you guys. All right. Uh, let me look back. at Let me look back at the no one said there would be math tonight. <laughs> My bad, Chuck. Aren't you a teacher? Oh, no, but you're you're not a teacher of math. But again, this was this was an interesting data set that I at least wanted to show people because uh, this question comes up and, and people make these statements. And again, at least in this data set of these five books, that is not necessarily true. I mean, look at the value of the ASM. ASM 9.8 went from three thousand to fifty two hundred dollars. That is a significant increase. Right. But the percent increase is actually greater for the nine point six. Now, with this said, none of this is intended to say that nine point sixes are not good investments. It is not to say that you should not buy nine point sixes. It is not to say that nine point eights are the end all be all. It is simply to demonstrate that sometimes when we use blanket statements, those statements are not necessarily 100% accurate. Um, and the data actually proves that point, right? Um, if you can get a 9.8, get it. If you can get a 9.6, get it. Both are awesome books. Let me let me end it on that note. Let me end it on that note, all right? Um, let me take that down off the screen. Uh, the one last thing that I want to hit on is um, some craziness that happened with Flash. So uh, to the point that Mark was making there about uh, integrating the actors, if you will, in the movies into the comics, how that could be detrimental. He cited one example, but another potential example, uh, depending upon how far you want to take it, is what just re recently happened with Ezra Miller. Ezra Miller, who plays the Flash, uh, was arrested. He was arrested at a karaoke bar, and uh, it appears that he was interfering with harassing uh, people in the karaoke bar, uh, and this is also not the first time that he's done it. Uh, but but Ezra was, uh, I think he was arrested, and he was ultimately bailed out of the Hawaiian jail for like a couple of hundred bucks. But again, this, this is, if, if you integrate the movies, the TV shows into the comics, you could have crazy stuff like this happen. And uh, I don't, again, I, I did not necessarily plan this based upon some of the stuff that Mark was talking about, but this was something that literally happened today uh, that I ended up pulling, or it was updated three minutes ago, but I think I found it earlier today. And again, I found it interesting and at least wanted to share with you guys. All right. Uh, shame on him. <laughs> uh, he must've heard me sing, says Neil. <laughs> Neil, Brother, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, Neil. I don't want to hear you sing. I'm, I'm going to just be honest with you. you. You have a good voice, Neil, but I don't want to hear you sing. I'm going to just be completely honest. Uh, while and out. <laughs> Wilding out at the bar, got himself arrested, and uh, at least it was only 300 bucks. It was only 300 bucks. <laughs> Kevin Pitts, how you doing, brother? It is good to see you. Tina, the OG, is saying hello to, to Neil, who happens to be my, my neighbor. Uh, let me see. Let me see. All right. I think I'm all caught up. So, so again, um, 
some, uh, I think I have a couple of more videos coming out this week. Let me grab my list here, give you guys a quick update. Uh, we have yesterday I released uh, my CGC submission video. It's been a while since I sent some books into CGC. So I showed you guys some really awesome books that I sent in. If you have not watched that video, check it out. On Monday, we released Are We Obsessed with 9.8s? Uh, so that's a video that came out this week. If you haven't seen those, I encourage you to check them out tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to be showing you guys my new comic book room. Uh, and then on Friday as a bonus video, I'm going to give you a tour of this room here because, uh, some people had questions as to how I do this or that, or how this is organized. So I put together a quick bonus video just to kind of show you guys some of the behind the scenes stuff, even though I've done it before, there's a lot of new people that have come to the channel. So I wanted to make sure that I went ahead and, uh, fulfilled that request. All right. So there you go. And again, uh, shout out to the winners of the giveaway, uh, Vika. Vikra uh, tonight and also Anime Geek 611 as the winners of the short box giveaway and also the Black Adam cover contest. Um, is, is he in more trouble than just what I know? I mean, I know he's been he's harassed a few people a few times. The article did speak to that, but uh, I, I was not aware that it was a uh, a much larger thing. Oh, I missed a couple of super chats. Let me scroll through. Let me scroll through. Let me get these super chats real quick, Tina. Um, let me scroll. And they are gone. They are gone. Uh, they they disappear, and then I I can't. Oh, and here's one. Myself in comics. I see one right there. Uh, thank you, brother. I definitely appreciate that. Myself in comics. I appreciate the super chat. I think there was one other that I did acknowledge. I'm literally scrolling through the entire chat here. And um, we spoke about Ty Brute. There you go. Thank you, brother. I definitely appreciate that as well. Uh, and as I mentioned, for that comic shop in Canada that was burned out, I am going to make a donation here momentarily. I will also put a link in the description so that folks can actually check that out. Thank you, brother. I definitely appreciate that. Uh, some cool stuff. Some cool stuff going down. Uh, and yeah, there you go. All right, with that, we're going to wrap this up. I want to thank you all for hanging out with me just a little bit. And as always, if you need to reach out to me for whatever reason, don't hesitate to do so on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care. <laughs>